Vergie. Stay with us now for some special programming. CNN Heroes, an all-star tribute, starts now. Extending a hand to the forgotten. This is... This is... This is CNN Heroes. Good evening, everyone. I'm Anderson Cooper. The Chilean men that you just saw on this stage embody faith, and selflessness, and courage. And those are the qualities that we celebrate tonight. The 10 CNN heroes you're going to meet tonight are each in their own way helping to make this a better world. They're caring, they're compassionate, but make no mistake, they are also fighters. They are warriors against injustice, doing battle for all of us. They gather here not just to receive our well-deserved acclaim, but to inspire us to stand up and take action in our own lives and in our own communities. You're going to be able to immediately lend your support to these heroes by clicking the Donate Now tab at Facebook.com slash CNN Heroes. And later tonight, one of these honorees will be named the 2010 CNN Hero of the Year. We have a really amazing lineup of some very famous folks who wanted to come and help honor our heroes tonight. And you're going to hear some amazing musical performances. John Legend, Sugarland, and Bon Jovi are here. An all-star tribute with appearances by Kiefer Sutherland and Renee Zellweger. We're back on CNN Heroes. If you didn't have to struggle for food today, you're one of the lucky people on this planet. Our next hero got a painful reminder of that fact. His path was forever changed from five-star chef of an upscale hotel to a soldier in the war against hunger. To tell us how one man can nourish the bodies and spirits of many, here's a support of the Global Fund for Women, Kiefer Sutherland. Every single one of us has seen something so devastating that it has broken us. Maybe it's something quiet, a mother kissing her kids goodnight in the back of her old station wagon, or something even more shocking, a man literally starving to death on the street. And when we see things like this, most of us feel it deeply. But we manage to pull ourselves back together and go on with our lives. But thank God there are people on this planet like Narayanan Krishnan, who cannot. He comes from a life of privilege, but he shuns the cultural belief of some in India that says that men and women who are destitute, homeless, struggling, or suffering from mental illness are untouchables, unworthy of compassion. But he sees them as equal. That is why he cooks for them, feeds them, cares for them, and offers them the simple dignity of a bath. The sight of the hungry, the sick, and the homeless broke his heart to pieces. But he took those pieces and built a life for himself, helping people in need as their friend. I saw a very old man. He was eating his own human waste for hunger. I thought, what is the purpose of my life? What am I going to do? In a star hotel, I feed all my guests. But where in my hometown, there are people who are living even without food. I, I quit my job and I started feeding all these people from 2002. Today morning we made uh, Ven Pungal and Sambar. Ven Pungal is a blend of uh, rice and dal. And for the lunch we made uh, tomato rice and sabji. We fed the homeless, mentally ill destitutes and the old people who have been left uncared of the society. People are suffering for food. They don't have food to eat. If you don't give them food to eat, they will die out of human hunger. I cut their hair, I give them a shave, I give them bath. For them to feel psychologically that they are also human beings. There are people to care for them. Yeah, they have a hand to hold, hope to live. Food is one part, love is another part. So the food will give them physical nutrition. The love and affection which you show will give them mental nutrition. 
Brahmins are not supposed to touch these people, clean these people, hug these people, feed these people. Everybody has got 5.5 liters of blood. I am just a human being. For me, everybody are same. What is the ultimate purpose of life? Is to give. Start giving. See the joy of giving. Very good morning, uh, everybody. I'm, uh, in fact, uh, humbled and uh, happy to be here. The award function which happened there was uh, the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. This is the, side, the Shrine Auditorium wherein I'm, I'm, I'm in front of uh, a lot of youth and youngsters here. The first Indian to get the award there in Shrine Auditorium was R. A. Raghuman and the second is Akshaya Trust. Out of 100 countries, 10,000 nominations, I did not nominate myself. 100 countries, 10,000 nominations, Akshaya was been in top 24 and by the blue ribbon panel top 10 and now top 2 in the world. I finished my BSc Hotel Management in the midst of uh, June 2002. I got a very lucrative job in Taj Hotel, Bangalore. I was supposed to go to Switzerland on a week's bond, on a four-year bond. My mom said, you are very naughty, please come here. So when you go back to Swiss for uh, four years, you will not be back. So when I came here on a week's holiday, I saw a very old man having his own uh, human waste for hunger. I was um, literally shocked for a second. I have never experienced such a situation before in my life. I thought, what is happening in my city? What am I going to do? I just went to the nearby hotel, brought some choice idlis and gave it to him. Within seconds, he finished those idlis and gave me a look of gratitude. If he would have thanked me that day, I would have again gone back to my Taj hotel. It was a silent revolution of self-realization. After coming back home, I thought, what is going to purpose of my life? I prepare a plate of fried rice for $10 and sell it in my hotel, wherein people come and have food just for fun, not for hunger. What am I going to do? God gave me the clarity to quit my job in 2002 and with the little amount of savings which I had, I started feeding people on the road. I was very cautious and clear not to feed the mentally ill people. I was very cautious and clear not to feed the beggars. My ultimate mission and vision was to feed the old people and the mentally ill people alone. I started feeding and slowly public started contributing for the cost. From 2003, we registered a trust called Akshaya Trust in Madurai. And you would have seen a lot of people on the roads having big, big long haircuts, uh, hairs. So I thought, what am I going to do for them? I called a barber. Uh, bar many of the people said, many barbers said, no, I'm not going to come and do this because these, these people are stinking. Some did said, okay, I will come and help them to give the haircut. So what happened was the strangers, no, ba 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 the mentally ill people, barbers to be strangers. So they were, the mentally ill people were running left side and the barbers were running the right side and it was a running and chasing game. So what is going to be the solution for this? And 2003, 2004, in the midst, I went to a Malaya saloon and uh, professionally trained myself. I can now cut 11 varieties of haircuts. And so, so far, I have given not less than three to 4,000 haircuts to people on the roads. 2003, now, now we have Apple phones, Blueberry, Blueberry Blackberry, Iberry, Icon, Sony Ericsson, so many phones. Uh, nowadays, uh, we have everything, but those times only landlines and pagers. My friends from Switzerland called my father and said, Dad, the Christian did not come, I don't know why. Here we are paid very well. He got frightened. He being a chef, I can toss a fried rice for four foot height, not even, not even a grand will, will fall down. So Christian did not come. What happened? My dad got confused and uh, he went and shared uh, to his friends and relatives. It's really a very true incident which happened. Two uh, suggestions was being given to my father. One, take him to a psychiatrist. The second is take him to Chotani Kare, which is there in Kerala, down south. Somebody would have done black magic to him. <laughs> Do pujas, his mental illness will get cured. So my, my father was hesitant to talk to me, hesitant to talk to me. And after that, um, he slowly said that, uh, no problem, guy, you'll, you'll become all right. 
you have to be under basic medication and things like that. I told my mom and dad, okay, fine. Uh, I could not be here without your presence in this world. If you feel what I'm doing is not right, I don't want to do it. I will again go back to my star hotel and start feeding um, all the people over there. But before that, I want you to see what I'm doing. Taking that into consideration, my mom and dad uh, came along with me in midst of uh, 2003 to see all these people. And uh, I told my mom, you sh uh, my mother and father, you should not sit inside the AC car and see what's happening. I want you to get down and give food to those people. So in 2003-04, uh, my mom gave food to those people, put those people on the road. Lot of old people and mentally ill people on the road touched the foot of my mom and said, now we are able to eat three meals a day is only because of your son. I was being thrown out by the family, by my, my own son. My daughter threw me out, my daughter-in-law threw me out. And um, my mother was totally shocked. And after coming home, my mom said, my dear son, you feed all these people. I will feed you till I'm alive. So that was the inspiration, which uh, energy, which my mother gave me. And I started this organization I was, uh, when I was 19 years old. And again, slowly witnessed that a uh, lot of people on the roads die. I knocked and knocked out almost all the doors of the government concerns. Nothing cropped up, nothing turned up. People die on the road and after two days, three days, the body is not being taken up. Dogs come and bite the human body which is there on the road. So I thought, what is going to be the solution? And from 2004 till now, I got up so far cremated 480 destitute bodies on the road. There was a huge uh, uh, problem in my community because I hail from Brahmin community. Huge problem problem from my community saying that you are grandson of uh, Sri Great Krishna here. You are the grandson of Sri Great Venkatramayar. You are not supposed to do this. I asked them why. You are a Brahmin. You are not supposed to touch them. You are not supposed to hug them. You are not supposed to give them a haircut. You are not supposed to cremate. You are doing all, all, all type of activities. Which is, not, which is not supposed to have your community to do. I said, what is bothering you? The sacred thread which you are wearing is, wearing is bothering us. I said, with, if, I, if a small thread is going to bother me doing this activity, I don't want it. So in 2004-5, midst of 2004-5, I removed my sacred thread and I gave, I gave it to them. I am not a Brahmin. I don't have a caste, creed or color. I am just a human being. The regular routine of Akshaya for the last, uh, it, it's going to be one decade now. Uh, we in the sense, uh, we have now a team, volunteer base. Now I'm here in front of you is because um, we have trained and groomed almost about six volunteers. The mentally ill people on the road are being trained and groomed and now they are active volunteers of Akshaya and Madurai. Now I'm here in front of you talking to you, but uh, they are there, the mentally ill people are being cured and taking care of Akshaya in my absence wonderfully. Today morning I got a phone call from the chef, from my chef saying that the idli has come out very well in your absence, sir. <laughs> so the spirit behind is that those people have the dignity and hand to hold. Um, we are feeding almost about 450 people three meal a day. Get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, cook the food, take it to the Maruti Omni van, go distribute, come back go to the market, buy vegetables, again, uh, uh, come, to the, come back to the kitchen, cook the lunch, go give it back, again, uh, again come back, prepare the uh, dinner. From 4 to 11, we are with the people, giving them haircut, clean shave, water to drink, clothes to wear. In 2006-07, I witnessed lot of mentally ill women are getting sexually harassed by the society and they start giving birth to kids on the road. So far, we have... Uh, uh, given legal adoption to not less than 40, 43 kids. Last week we gave a legal adoption to a kid on the road. On 2007 I witnessed what is going to be the mission of Akshaya. Just going and feeding them, giving water, talking to them, we need to rehabilitate them. So 2008 we had an opportunity, uh, Reliance Industries, uh, Rajdeep Sardesai, Sri Mukesh Ambani, Nita Mukesh Ambani recognized Akshaya to be the best in India and they gave us an award, a cash award of 5 lakhs of rupees. With that, um, with the help of Infosys Foundation and TVS group of companies and, and with the land with grandfather gave me, 
I just sold it out and uh, purchased almost about uh, 3 acres of land in outskirts of the city. Now, um, <coughs> we have uh, in, a, in an 